My name is John. I'm here with Jen and Nicole. Tonight we got a lovely, lovely episode for you guys. This is a story of love, lust, and gothic chicks. And I can say this because it was in the police report. Cat fights. Meow. <laughs> Uh, so tonight we're going to Googs, Googs Earth. We did a one killer cat fight before. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Can you remember their names? No. no. We are on live chat right now for you Supremos. We may start doing live shows for YouTube subscribers every Saturday. So talkmer.com. But only little the little ones. Yeah. Like in- only the first episode, just yeah. the small episodes. And then continuing on for our Supremos for the remainder episodes of the week. Are we going to do a shot? Oh, yeah. We are. I'm not naming uh, this as a dedication now. Dedicate it to Jen's good leg. Okay. Well, I feel like her bad leg is the one that needs (laughs) the love at this point. So so Jen's bad leg? It does need another shot to kind of numb (laughs) it. Surprise shots, surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. Oh, that burns. Is that it's just vodka? Yeah, it was. I think I'm just so middle shelf. What is <laughs> no, it? No, that was that was the top shelf. What? That was that French vodka that we have. The Grey Goose. When do no. when do French people know anything about vodka? French people don't drink vodka. I think that we should. Anything that the French people do. And why are we taking vodka shots when vodka is from Russia? Oh, we should ban it. It is French vodka, not Russian vodka. We have a pro Putinist here. We're not drinking Stoli. We're drinking. Pro Putinist. I forget what that brand is called, but it is French. (sighs) So I feel like we're okay. Maybe we should look up things uh, like is there any vodka from Ukraine that we can buy? Oh. No, there's a bunch of oil that we're probably going (laughs) to steal. Well, that's from Canada. America's like, Russia's bad. And then we go over there and start pumping out the oil. (laughs) I mean, they could always just open up. We don't get a lot of our oil from Russia. Two percent. Two percent. Two percent. All right. Tonight we're going here on Google Earth. I'm just kidding. This Ah, is a boycotter's guide. Hang on. Five Ukrainian alternatives to russian vodka sorry stoli lovers no more yeah but russians make the best fucking vodka why well, would you drink anything else well we're drinking no French no vodka. serious vodka drinkers drinker drinkers i feel going like to. we need to look into irish vodka because of the potatoes they're too drunk to spend the time to make vodka i'm just kidding so uh, that was mean. if sorry. anyone is is Curious uh, boycotts of Russian vodka are unlikely to affect Russia economically. Blah 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 blah. Um, Svedka and Smirnov are not actually made in Russia, despite having Russian sounding names. If anyone was curious, um, I don't know if we would get these Ukrainian vodka brands, but you know, I'm gonna post this link uh, to the YouTube chat if anyone is curious what I'm looking at here couple of uh, Ukrainian vodka brands. All right. Tonight we're going to Moline by American Love. Oh, yeah. Tito's. Yeah. Tito's is Texas, Tito's right? Tito's is good. Yeah. Isn't that like a... What's it? It's like... It's made a certain way, isn't it? Tito's. Oh, man. I can it drink Tito's and water minus the water all day long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good call with the Tito's. All right, well, I bought what was on sale at Total Wine, and it was the French stuff, so. Tonight, we're going to Moline, Illinois. Anybody been to Moline? Moline, Moline. This is Moline right here. Small, quiet town. Mid-sized town, low crime rate. This is Moline. Nothing to it. And you saw from the last one that we're going to, well, here... In the last episode, I teased the episode by showing you a manhole cover. What about a woman hole cover? Oh, is it? It is 2022. People hole cover. Person cover. 
people hold. <laughs> anyway, what are you looking at right meow if you describe this? Uh, Hang on, I don't know if they're seeing it. Can you guys see this? What are you looking at right now? Try to describe what it is. It looks like insulation, but then it also looks like a head. A flamingo? How does that look like a head? It just does, okay? Are you like taking pain meds? No, I'm not. I have not (laughs) taken any and I'm in pain. All right, let's get started. So what you're looking at now, and this picture might be a little better. A dead flamingo. No, it's nothing to do with a flamingo. Okay, good. I was going to be really sad. I'm feeling that shot already. This is another photo right here. Now, I showed you on the last episode, I kind of teased a little bit, a manhole cover. We're actually going to two separate crime scenes tonight. Two separate crime scenes. This is the first crime scene that the police walk up to. This is January 26th, 2005 in Moline, Illinois. And you can't really see anything here, but it's obviously out in the woods, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can make out something in here. You see some burnt stuff. Yeah, it looks like almost like stuffing or something in the that Cans, white stuff. Trash bottles. Yeah. Well, I said this. This was a. This is a crime scene. Maybe this will be a little better. Anything? So this is actually the remains of a burnt human human being. I don't see. Yeah, it's just charred remains here. So tonight we are talking, is a tragic case. We're actually talking about this girl right here. This is where she ended up, one of two places. And this is her. Oh, she's young. Before. So if you want to describe her. Maybe 14, 15. Glasses, brown hair. This is another photo. Aww. You see her here. Snuggling with her doggy. Who you're looking at now is Adrian Reynolds. She is originally from Kilgore, Texas, which we've done a story from Kilgore. Anyway, who you're looking at tonight, this is Adrian Reynolds. At this point, the photo you're seeing now, her with the dog. I'm thinking maybe 13, 12, 13. Yeah, somewhere around there. It's a cute little doggy. I know. What is he it? He cuddles like, it looks like a boxer. Yeah. You think so? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When Adrian was 12 years old and living in Texas, she was already addicted to hard drugs. She was Dang. already in rehab before the age of 12. Oh Which is God. crazy, right? Yeah. I mean, do people get that young go to rehab? Apparently so. Fuck. That's awful. Can you imagine sending your daughter to rehab at 12? No. So, and this was in Texas. Obviously, she was not a good student. She was moving around to round in different foster homes. She had no friends or family, even in Texas. However, this story takes place in Illinois, so she actually moves up there. She couldn't finish reg- regular high school because she was so far behind, like years behind. So the only alternative was alternative school, and she moves up to stay with her real father because apparently her stepfather was mistreating her. And that's all I saw mistreating. I don't know about anything else, but the stepfather was mistreating her, abusive to her, and she was getting in trouble, skipping school, doing drugs, going to rehab, all this stuff. She moves with her real father in Moline, Illinois, and now she's a Texas girl with that long Texas draw. You know how they talk real slow like that? So she is a Texas girl living in Illinois, And she, obviously, for her age, she's pretty. She's a pretty, I mean, she'd Mm -hmm. be popular easy, especially with the accents. I was trying to go with that. I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway. She's the new girl. January 26, 2005, her parents report her missing. Now, this is in Moline, Illinois. And where she ended up is what I just showed you. Now, she actually got involved with the wrong crowd 
And by wrong crowd, I mean one person. So take a look at her now. This is her now. And I'll show you a picture of her again, because there's a noticeable transformation once she gets involved with this girl who you're about to see. She kind of adapts her whole lifestyle to fit the niche of this girl, which is goth. This is the girl she meets right here. If you want to describe this girl, she, her name is Sarah Kolb. They go to the same school. Well, she does look like she's into the goth scene. She has eye piercings, lip piercing, eyebrow piercing. Sorry, not like something pierced in her eyes. I was going to say, wow. <laughs> she has a couple of chains on. She has one of those crosses that were big back in mm -hmm. um, rings. She's Short hair. flipping the bird, too, in this photo. With the camera. All right, Sarah Kolb also goes to this alternative high school. This high school is called Black Hawk Outreach. It's basically a, uh, and what all the characters involved in this true case says, it's a school for the worst of the worst. The outcasts, the people that, the kids that get in trouble, the ones that cannot get accepted to any other school. As children, they're sent here, and it kind of prepares them for future as far as the skills concerned, you know, whether it's wood cutting or, uh, you know, I'm just saying, whatever it is, it just gives them a skill. So when they get out, they are not just going to be worthless to society, right? She doesn't know anyone, and she's very shy. Immediately... Sarah Cole befriends her. Now, what's weird about this story is because from what I imagine, I'm not sure 100%, but in what high school does the goth population become the most, po most popular? This girl that you're looking at right now, Sarah Kolb, is the most popular girl at this school. And she's complete goth. Goth. God, why? Why am I mispronouncing words, man? Oh, can you add the photo to the, the thing? She is complete goth. I'll show you some more pictures of her, but black everywhere, piercings everywhere. She wears the baggy, the big chains, Jinko jeans, Jinko jeans, the makeup, the vampirism, all that stuff. And she is the most popular girl at this alternative school. She was called the quote queen of the freaks. End quote. Instead of like Queen of the Plastics. Oh. She was a pasty goth chick with black studs. That's what one student had said about her. But like I said, she was the top of the top at this high school. So it was weird because she's goth, right? No? I mean, I get uh, for maybe the type of school that it was. Yeah. It was probably like normal. Yeah. yeah. Like, like the alternative yeah. school. Now, Sarah's background is is hard to pin down because she is a liar herself. She's a habitual liar. This is the this is the girl that's going to kill her. Kill Adrian. Sarah's background is very hard to pin down. She says she was abused as a child. However, those statements have been rebuted and disagreed with. I don't know. However, this is what I do know. Her parents divorced when she was young. Her dad was a police officer. But both of her parents were not around. She was, at the time, extremely popular at this alternative school. Sarah Kolb was also bisexual. Now, when the new girl, Adrian, shows up, she is not. She's straight. So she gets introduced to that world through Sarah. Sarah takes a liking to her. And after they start hanging out, the innocent Adrian completely changes. So this is what she used to look like here sweet innocent i mean troublemaker obviously but you can see her transformation after she meets mm. um sarah Kolb. so you saw you see that you know makeup now yeah kind of like that look like i don't give a fuck type of shit oh. eyeliner yeah she's got another uh ear you know cartilage piercing So I'll put these photos on talkmore.com so you can see kind of the transition there. A little bit about Adrian before we, we go any further. 
Her mother was 16 years old when Adrian was born. She had a lot of problems in Texas, like I said. Her stepdad was mistreating her. She started acting out. By the age of 12, she was in rehab, and she also had three separate assault charges pinned on her by the age of 12. So 11, she just turned 12, three assault charges. She is a cutter, or she was a cutter. She felt better when she cut. That's what she would tell everyone. She moved to Illinois to start a brand new life. So she's doing good at first. She's the shy girl in school. No one's really noticing her. And you know how kids, even you know when we're growing up, like popularity is everything. So the new girl is now getting, coming under the wing of the most popular girl in school, Sarah Kolb. And that's not a good thing at all. But to her, now she is adapting to this new lifestyle and she's getting popular. Boys are looking at her, talking to her. She's liking this a lot. Sarah introduces her to what it's like to be bisexual. So they start this romantic thing or whatever. And you can just see that this is not going in a good place. She ends up, and I said there's two crime scenes, one victim, right? Mm. So... I shouldn't say crime scene. There's two dump sites and one victim. Laura adds, Adrian was also mentally slow. Oh. So she had a learning disability. Of I didn't kind. see that. Yeah, so Laura from live chat, Adrian was also mentally slow. I did not, I didn't see that, but I definitely see that you could have uh, saw that somewhere and I may have missed that. She definitely did not have very good grades at all. Because, like I said, she moved to Illinois just because she couldn't really get into any other school. Well, plus her dad's up there. Anyway, so these are two different personalities. You have Adrian, the new girl, wearing polo pink. She, pink's like her favorite color, like in her room, everything's pink kind of thing. Just a, a regular girl, blue jeans. But over that year, it completely transforms and she becomes... A goth wearing black, listening to that devil music, wearing that devil's makeup and the devil's clothing. So she was doing what she could to be accepted by the popular students. Exactly. Which the popular students were gothic, which is crazy. Okay. It's, I, whenever we talk about the goth population, I just think about that video yeah. where they're dancing under the underpass. <laughs> yep. But also, when you showed the manhole, it reminded me of Righteous Gemstones when they're at that rave, and they come out yeah. through the manhole. Did you watch season two yet? No. Oh my god, so good. Of what? Righteous Gemstones. It was a great season. Yeah, we recognize all the places, too. It's cool. Because they film it right here. Maybe for season three, we'll, we'll catch the extra notice mm. a little bit ahead of time didn't they leave it where it could have a season three we looked it up and they are going to have a season okay. three they did it's not like left on a crazy cliffhanger though which is kind of nice but it was oh my god it was such a great show great i think it, season two is even better than the first anyway all right let's talk about sarah Kolb, the goth she's from milan illinois when I first started researching this case i just typed in her name because that's the name that people search for and I saw a different side of her before I even knew what the case was about. The newspapers I was reading, like from quadcitytimes.com, she was misviewed by the public. Yeah, she's goth. She doesn't give a fuck. But once they interviewed like all of her friends and classmates, she's actually a very caring person. I'll let you decide. But that's what I read when I first started this, this is case the, this is the popular this is girl? the killer yeah the killer okay hmm. okay but from her own words she says quote no one else seemed to care what i was doing and i think it rubbed off on me her sister her own sister portrayed sarah as a quote abused child who was punished inappropriately end quote i don't know how far you want to take that i didn't see anything about any about specific i didn't see any specifics on that but the, I will tell you that the judge did not believe that Sarah Kolb was abused or deserved any pity. 
for this case, for her killing. I will tell you that. One friend, an Andrea DeJong, this is from the Quad City Times, 30th of August, 2006. They went to junior high together, and this girl, Andrea, was going through chemotherapy for her cancer, which, man, thinking about a kid with cancer is fucking terrible. Anyway, Sarah Kolb, the, the killer tonight, Sarah Kolb, she actually shaves her own head because, quote, she knew it would make me feel better, end hmm. quote. So okay. this is what I started the story on, getting this side of her. And most people that tell a story won't go this route. And I probably wouldn't either if the newspaper didn't just randomly come up with this story about the kind of the other side of her. Like maybe the goth thing was kind of like a shield of protection or whatever. She knew it worked. She fit in with the crowd that way. So maybe she was, you know, that's what happened. Another teenager said the following, quote, I probably would have taken my own life if she had not befriended me, end quote. So that's the killer tonight. A little bit more about her. She was suspended from her alternative high school for cutting six. This is six months before the murder actually happened. So I didn't even know you could get suspended for cutting. They can suspend you for cutting. I feel like there's a big problem there. Um, we don't like, susp- We wouldn't suspend someone for cutting. What we would do is, um, if someone is suspected of cutting, we would talk to them and then we would call the parent and ask, like, you know, give a mental health referral. But we would not discipline someone for cutting. No. Yeah. Well, she got. Oh, she got suspended. Her, she's retracting her messages. Message retracted. What did it say? Did it say John's my favorite? I don't know. I didn't see it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what did it say? <laughs> I saw something about like, oh, she felt bad now. You don't after, have like le- learning more about the girl. Maybe. What it felt bad about what? I don't know what she said. Just keep going. Let's keep go. going. Oh, don't let, it get distra- don't get, uh, let no, this distract you. Don't feel bad, Laura. This is, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. You don't, don't have to retract Don't get distracted if I, not. I know. I know. I got to rush a little bit. Jen's got, unfortunately, got to go to a funeral on top of all the other stuff that has happened to her this week, which is terrible. Her knee, her ankle, ankles fucking twisted. Anyway, I'm going to move on. Sarah suspended from Alternative High School for cutting six months before the murder. The only reason that she was in alternative high school to begin with is because she was so badly bullied and harassed in public school. And from the reporter that wrote this story, this is because she was bisexual. That's what I think that was speculation, whatever he wrote in there. But that's what he said. One specialist, a Patricia Vincent, hired by the defense, read her journal. And uh, we'll talk about the journal in a little bit, but at this school, the Black Hawk High or the Black Hawk Outreach Community School for Troubled Teens, they require every student to write a daily journal and turn it in to the teacher. One specialist, Patricia Van Sant, hired by the defense, read her journal. "Quote: The impression I got from reading Sa- reading Sarah's journal is that she's lost. She's clueless as to who she is." Now, I'm, I'm presenting this story completely different than I think anyone else would present it, okay? She still did a horrible murder, as you're going to see. She says after she was arrested, quote, If I really could have one wish, it would be to change the mistakes I've made. I would have cared like I do now. Now, the Rock Island County State Attorney Jeff Torrens said that she was just full of shit and that she's, quote, replete with evil. So she comes into... This new girl's life, Adrian's life, Adrian's shy, she's not meeting anyone, and Sarah actually really likes her, like likes her in that way. Adrian brings Sarah home. One of Adrian's family members says she looks like a, quote, thug freak, and she's, quote, weird looking and trying to act like she was bad, end quote. Now, this is a, this story is about a love triangle because one of Sarah's closest friend i think the closest friend that she had at the time and maybe they still talk or whatever his name was Corey gregory they were a thing in the past but they still hung out together they were like glued to each other 
So now Sarah is getting the likings for this new girl, with this Texas draw. She's going to bring her into her group of friends and more importantly, into this triangle. Mm -hmm. Now, no one, none of these kids really thought about the consequences of what they were doing at the time. But you can see that there's going to be some romantic tension here between the new girl and this guy, Corey Gregory. It's not that Sarah hated it because she used to have a romantic thing for him. But it's because Sarah really wanted to be with the new girl, Adrian. And Corey Gregory, which I'm about to show you here, was completely and still is completely, as you'll hear in one quote, even years later, com head over heels obsessed with Sarah. Mm. But it was that unrequited love where she kind of half has, she has them wrapped around her finger type of thing. And he'll do anything for her. Like, for instance, being the one that finishes Adrienne off by wrapping the belt around her neck. Oh. She'll do anything for her and even still will in prison. This is where the murder happened right here. This is, can you guess what restaurant that is? I bet Jen's going to nail it. Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. How the fuck did you know that? Because the of the bell. purple, the purple drive-through and the bell on the building. Yeah, the purple and the shape, drive through and the shape of oh, the building. Oh fuck! I didn't even see the. Yeah. Oh okay. Fucking amazing. I got it too. Mm -hmm. All right. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now let me show you Corey Gregory right quick. What do you think of him? Looks fucking like goddamn conic to me. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <the fuck>. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he was goth too, okay? I was just saying, like, he seems wide awake in this mugshot. <laughs> wide awake, fuck yeah, <laughs> Like he just had a five-hour energy. <laughs> Smile. So this is Corey Gregory. He's the one that actually participated in the killing as well. He's the one that tied the belt around her neck, uh, around Adrian's neck. All right. Sorry, I'm going to try to go through this a little fast. I'm just going to tell it off the cuff, okay? Okay. Here's what happens. Adrian moves to Illinois. She's this new girl. She gets pulled under the wing of the most popular girl in school, Sarah Cole. Sarah Cole, she owns everyone's attention. There's this place called the Party House that they all go to on the weekends, she never gets invited because she, she is just grandfathered in. She is expected to be there, Sarah is. So a new girl, especially one that wears polo and whatever women wear and ponytails or whatever, there's no way in hell that she's going to get into this crowd on her own. So Sarah Cole brings her under her wing, under the premise, at least to Sarah Cole, that they were a, an emotional thing. However, for a young and impressionable Adrian who has never experienced the love of another woman or, you know, whatever, the bisexual lifestyle, mm -hmm. this is just something for her that's to try. And uh, I kind of like it, but, you know, I think I like boys more. However, that's not what Sarah wanted. So she became bisexual kind of like as just to do it sort of thing. And now she's pulling away from Sarah who has her under her wing. Mm. So she's pull. All right. She's pulling away from Sarah, which means she's now popular. She gained her popularity because of Sarah. Sarah's at her locker and seeing this Adrian with all the, the, uh, the popular kids by herself. And she's also got this, this lust over Adrian because she knows that she can't have her because that was a, a, like a one-time fling thing for her. She becomes insanely jealous. The real problem escalates when Adrian goes to this party house by herself. Usually it's with Sarah and they're kind of a thing together and everyone knows that. However... At one point, Adrian actually goes to the party house by herself, and that's when things started 
escalating. At that party, Sarah pulls a knife on Adrian after Adrian comes down the stairs because you go up the stairs and it's like the makeout room. She brings a random boy up there. They have sex. Sarah, not Adrian. No, Adrian. Okay. Sarah shows up late. Okay. Adrian's already there, which is not something you would you should do because that's basically saying I don't need you anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, thanks for the popularity, but whatever. Okay, add that on to the fact that Sarah catches her walking down the stairs just having had sex with a random boy, and Sarah is obsessed with her romantically, and it's unrequited. So add that on there. And the the insane jealousy builds up. Sarah actually pulls a knife on Adrian at the party. Nothing happens besides pulling the knife. Okay. Let's add one more thing to that. Corey Gregory, the man you're seeing here, Corey Gregory, who is also at the party, sees that poor Adrian just got a knife pulled on her and she got banished from the party, hmm. disgraced in front of all the kids. All the popular kids. Sarah was belittling her, calling her a whore, a bitch, a cunt, everything in front of all these kids. So she runs out the door crying, basically, because it's like her popularity has been tarnished. Corey Gregory, being the nice guy he is, goes out to comfort her. And that's where they share their first romantic rendezvous. So you see where this is going? Yeah. Not only has... Adrian, the new girl, used Sarah to get popularity, but now her old fling, who used to be obsessed with Sarah, is now having sex with Adrian. Going kind of quick, there was a lot of tension for several weeks. A lot of threats, open threats, a lot of calling each other names, especially Sarah calling Adrian names, stalking mm-hmm. her and stuff like that. But at one point, she just kind of quits. She says, fuck it. Now, that pisses Adrian off because now Sarah, I know this is kind of confusing, but now Sarah is someone that she can't have anymore. And she liked that being chased around. And now Adrian starts writing love notes and in her own journal how she's desperate to try to get Sarah, her old fling, back. So it's, it's very confusing. But this is some of the letters that she sent to Sarah. Like, Sarah, quote, just read it, please. I can't change what I did then. Mm. But I can change now. These are actually the letters that she sent. This is kind of hard to read. I wanted you to know I love... I want to hold you. I can't read cursive. I don't know what I'm trying. She's got very pretty handwriting. Mm-hmm. So, on January 21st, she finally gets a response that she's been looking for from Sarah. Sarah says, you know what? All right. Let's work this out. Let's go to lunch. The thing with this school is, at lunch, you can just kind of go off wherever in your car mm. And get lunch and then come back or whatever. So January 21st, 2005, they pulled up to the Taco Bell. And you see that? It's not blood, but that spot where it's red. Yeah. It's probably like antifreeze or something. That's where they were. In the front seat driving was Sarah Kolb. In the back seat was Corey Gregory. And in the passenger seat was Adrian. Adrian thought they were going to work things out. However, it became obvious that Sarah just wanted to bring her alone because two days prior to this incident, this is the murder date, the 21st, she finds out that her once friend is now screwing her old fling, the guy that used to be obsessed with her. Mm -hmm. So looking for any excuse to to bring it up, they pull into this spot here to get lunch, and all of a sudden, and no one knows what happens because neither Sarah or Corey Gregory has actually said what actually happened. So we gotta, we gotta see, we gotta kind of speculate a little bit. But at some point, she brought up 
the fact that she was sleeping with the guy in the back seat, Corey Gregory, and then it it she just went off. Hitting each other, choking each other. At one point, Adrian punches Sarah Kolb in the face, and that's when Sarah throws her down. She obviously has a weight advantage, throws her down in the back seat. You know how you kind of can sit not on the back seat, but in the floorboard area. And now Corey's kind of like pushed back. When when if you hear an interview from him, there's an interview from him. He says at this point, he just wanted wanted them to just get it out of their system type of thing. I can't remember exact words, but he said something to the effect of that it was going to happen. Everyone in school knew it was going to happen. They just needed to get it. They just need to needed to get it out of the the way. So that's what he thought was going on. However, Adrian ends up in the back seat in that little spot there and she's being choked and this is what all the newspapers pick up about the Sarah Kolb story. She says that she didn't feel anything, no emotions or whatever as she was choking her victim, choking, choking, choking. No one knows if she died right there from being choked or if it was the belt that Corey had took off and wrapped around her neck. He did that for her, for Sarah because even in an after interview when he's in prison, they probably haven't even talked. He says, quote, I'm always on Sarah's side. He puts the neck around Adrian and he pulls it. Now, I said there were two, two, different, uh, two different dump sites here. Mm-hmm. Going back to the first dump site you see here, I'll put these photos on talkmore.com. This was found in a manhole in the woods, covered with leaves and dirt. Adrian's parents go to the police, and the police go to the school. And like I said earlier, they're required to have journal entries that they submit to the teacher. And in the journal entries, you'll see in a second, Sarah actually kind of confessed to this whole thing that said, if this happens, I'm going to kill her type of thing that day. As you'll see, that exact day. So it was pretty obvious. However, neither Corey or Sarah wanted to say anything. However, in the long term, Corey's conscious got to him and he told his father, which then they went to the police. They kill her and they hire the help, not hire, but they call another friend who was underage at the time. However, I'm going to show you his photo right here. All right, it's this guy right here. They called this guy which is a a underage friend at the time because they just like in the movies think that they have to cut up the body that's why it's in two different dump sites because they do hatch it up the body right now his name is nathan godette he got five years for this murder he was underage at the time so they go to a small farm it's her granddad's farm and they cut her up First, they they cut her in uh, seven pieces. Mm. First, the leg, the left leg, then the right. And this is all coming from the guy that actually did the cutting. This guy right here. Look at the cop looking at him like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. I mean, and that guy on the left, the cop on the left looks like the guy from um, that show we watched, Succession. Yeah, I see it. So look at his. I mean, he just cut up a human body probably like 24 hours ago. Anyway, first the left leg, then the right leg, then the left arm, then the right arm. Then he saws off her head. Then he, for some reason, saws her torso in half. Two garbage bags hold Adrian. They first, after they deposited the remains, one in that manhole, which I'll show you a better picture of that because you can see the, the actual hand coming out. One in the manhole in another location, the burn site, they deposit all of, or they deposit half in one site, half in the other. Then they go out for fast food. They're eating burgers. And then they go back to burn the body, the mm-hmm. remains. The police officer that came across the burn site on January 26th, so five days later, was Lieutenant Tim Steins. He was with the Rock Island Police Department. 
he lifted the manhole cover where he, quote, I see a large bag with a charred hand protruding from it, end quote. What they figure out is that they tried to burn a body. It's this TV thing. These kids, they, they watch the TV and you can burn a body on TV, so it must be how it works. It's not, and I would never do it. I never burned a body, but apparently they had burned this body, her body, numerous times. Mm. They actually had to pack up, go to the gas station, get another can of gas, burn it again. So seven or eight times they tried to burn the body. It just does not work that way, apparently. Wow. A human body just does not burn. They take the next, they take the remain the other remains of her and they put them down this manhole cover right here. Wow. On the on this photo right here on the right. You so can, is that the trap like the body in the trash bag? Yeah. Now this is he said you can see a charred hand. I've been looking for it. I couldn't find it. This they may have tucked it in. I know this sounds mm. grotesque. But the lieutenant actually has to crawl down that manhole, pull the bag up. So, I don't know. I didn't see a hand. I don't know. Maybe you guys can. I'll put that on talkmore.com. Blackhawk School requires their students to keep an, an everyday journal. So, this is Sarah Kolb's journal right here. Stupid bitch needs to back up off my Kool-Aid. She's going to give him a note. Yeah, we'll. Oh, I'll fucking I think kill her. I'll fucking kill her. I don't know. So, I mean, that's not really a confession because this is prior to it, but. Well, she says she will kill her in that one. Yeah. Here's the manhole cover that they threw her down. And this is her and Corey Gregory post trial. So you see how she is just not doing herself any favors. It's not, not, not a great look. No, it's not. Oh, it's really sad. I mean, I feel it seemed like, you know, she moved to hopefully get her life back on track because I know you said that Adrian was in, you know, in rehab and was clearly struggling with a lot of things. And this could have been a great opportunity. And you see her snuggling with that dog. Oh, but maybe it your could heart. have been avoided if. um, What's his name? Cody didn't. Corey. Mess with, Corey didn't mess with. Yeah, Adrian. That was like the last straw. But it was more of uh, that and the fact that she was the one that made her, if you will. And now the, uh, what is it called? The, the, the grasshopper has become the whatever, like, you know, you, you're branching out and doing your better than me type of thing. I don't know what that saying is. Anyway, so she is probably in prison for the majority of her life she got 53 years Um, so you know that's that Corey gregory the same she actually tried to testify against Corey gregory i saw saying that it was all him that did it so but he still has you know love for her apparently from the last thing i saw but anyway beautiful young girl that possibly could have made something great in her life snuffed out because of jealousy, stupid, stupidness, totally stupid, stupid kids. What was the 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 minor? Got, you said five years. Yeah, he got five years. Which I mean, you go up and look at him; he just looks giddy. Plus, he's a minor. Five years ain't nothing, man. Yeah, you know. I mean, it still goes on his record. Yeah. Yeah, but not permanently. Seven years or something like that. I don't know. Anyway. That's all I got for tonight's story. Kind of a, a quick one. Next week, we got some great stories coming up for you guys. I think I'm going to try to do three next week, weekend. So be sure you're here again. Ashley, thanks so much for joining us. I think it's the first time for you. Right? Yeah, I think so. uh, I think she may have joined us once before, but mm-hmm. I know it was good to, to see a whole lot of folks. We had Steph join, I think, for the first time and quite a few others. So thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks. And until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people.